If you look at the President's executive order, I think has been pointed out by some of my Democratic colleagues, it doesn't say anything about voting. It says, talks about the, the work permits and uh, the Social Security numbers, kind of the positive benefits that will result from uh, this uh, exercise of quote unquote prosecutorial discretion. But it doesn't say anything about voting. So, Secretary Kobach, what would your response be when people say the President didn't even address voting? How could this possibly be an issue? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's, it, it is perhaps an unintended consequence of what the President has done through these executive actions, because you are now giving approximately 5.8 million people, once they get their deferred action, uh, a Social Security number, and they in turn can get that driver's license. And I want to point something out. Of the aliens that we have specifically identified in Kansas on the voter rolls, the ones that were presented to the Federal District Court, approximately half of those aliens registered at the DMV. And it is important to note that, and this was before we had our proof of citizenship requirement in place. So when you get that driver's license at all too many DMVs across the country, the clerk who has been handing out licenses for, you know, all day long and has done several hundred within just the morning alone will oftentimes, out of rote habit, say, and would you like to register to vote at the end of the process. And so aliens are often given the opportunity to register to vote by someone they see as a government agent. And they sometimes use that as an excuse when they eventually are found, and sometimes in cases in the previous administration when people were, were deported for f falsely asserting U.S. citizenship, which is a felony under Federal law, they would sometimes say, but I thought I could register to vote because this lady who works for the government asked me if I would like to register to vote. And so quite often the government agent on behalf of the county unwittingly invites the alien to register, the alien unwittingly assumes that he's able to register. So in many cases, it's going to be completely accidental, but it will happen. It's a guarantee that it will happen, because when they go to the DMV, they will almost certainly be asked that question. Uh, Mr. Husted, you wrote a letter to the President uh, after he issued uh, these executive uh, actions. Um, this was late January 2015, and you wanted the Federal Government, I think, to cooperate with, with the State so that you could ensure the integrity of the elections. And so have you received a response from the Administration about that letter? Mr. Chairman, I have not. And what would you like the Administration to do, and how will that help you do your job to ensure uh, elections with integrity? What we have asked them for are anybody who is receiving a Social Security number who is a non-citizen, we would like to have the name the date of birth, and the last four digits of their Social Security number. That would allow us to match it against our statewide voter database to, to determine whether anyone, uh, uh, anyone who is a non-citizen is on our voter rolls, and then we would go through the process of, of trying to remove them. But sim that is simply what we are asking for. We, th we believe that it is something that should be easily um, doable for the Federal Government, uh, and that would include people who are here under the under the uh, under present uh, tools uh, that allow you to ex to be in America legally, and those who would come uh, under the president's new administrative action. And uh, do you concur with that, Mr. Kobach? Would that be helpful? Uh, that that would be helpful. I do think it would also be helpful for the uh, Congress to clarify that the Election Assistance Commission is a service agency, not a policymaking agency, and, and that it should not have the authority, which it has illegally exercised, at least according to the district court, but that case is still pending, um, its authority to tell states, no, we don't think you need proof of citizenship, which is essentially what that agency did. In fact, I shouldn't say that it wasn't the commission. It was an, uh, a, a temporary executive director of the commission that rendered that opinion. So that would also be helpful. Uh, Mr. Von Spakovsky, you are somebody who is uh, very knowledgeable. You write a lot on, on voting issues. Are you familiar with this Richmond, Chadha, and Ernest study that came out in 2014 about uh, non-citizens voting in the 20, uh, 2008 election? Yeah, I, I am familiar with it. And uh, I think as I read that, they, um, uh, it was their contention that, and I think as people have pointed out, uh, you are talking about some of the big national elections. There may not be enough people who are non-citizens to make a huge difference. But in 2008, it was these uh, authors' contention that 
there were enough noncitizens that voted in North Carolina to shift those electoral votes one way, and that the 2008 Senate race in Minnesota, uh, the margin of victory was lower than the number of noncitizens who voted. Is that an accurate uh, restatement of what they concluded? It, it, it is. Now, I, I should mention that there has been um, some debate, you know, over the validity of, of that. Uh, but uh, they based that assessment on a uh, something called the con uh, Comprehensive Congressional Survey, which was a survey of literally tens of thousands of, of voters in the 08 and 2010 election. And, uh, look, you can debate that. The, the authors of the study actually posted a, a long article at the Washington Post in which they answered some of the uh, claims of critics, but that shows that we do have a potential problem, and the actual prosecutions that have occurred show it is a real problem. Uh, Secretary Dunlap, how, in Maine, if, if somebody gets a work permit based on the President's executive action, uh, will that ipso facto entitle them to get a driver's license in Maine? Not necessarily, Mr. Chairman. There will be other required documents as well. We do require proof of residency. The Social Security number is not in it. We don't utilize that as proof of citizenship be, simply because you do not need to be an American citizen to obtain a Social Security number. Uh, it causes a fair amount of discomfort with people, for example, when we tell them we don't accept military ID cards as proof of citizenship for the same reason. So a, a work permit on itself, on its face, would not be sufficient for us to issue a driver's license. There would be other required documents, including proof of identity, which might be a passport, it might be a birth certificate. Lacking those documents, we would probably have to go into a lengthy exceptions process um, and I, if I may give you a, a very brief example, using an American citizen, uh, last year we were confronted with the difficulty of someone trying to obtain a renewal of their driver's license and was in a, we could not uh, process that request because they could not prove citizenship. Um, as it happened, the individual was of Vietnamese birth, had been adopted by an American serviceman by the, during the, the Vietnam War, and the hospital where he was born was destroyed by missile fire two weeks after his birth and all the records were lost. Uh, after a fair amount of research and working with some of our partners in the Federal Government, I was able to inquire after the constituent if they had a copy of his adopted father's obituary. And it was found that because he had been listed as a survivor, that was sufficient to satisfy our regulations. So it takes a fair amount of detective work to ascertain uh, proof of identity. So uh, you are not, I mean, but Maine, though, you, you would think it would be unacceptable if a work permit comes in, nothing else, no rubber stamp driver's license in Maine, correct? That is correct, Mr. Okay. Chairman. And, um, uh, let, let me just, I, I will um, recognize the, um, uh, the ranking member here in a second, but I just would like to respond to, to one contention that was made about the fact that there are penalties for people who vote illegally in the country, and that if somebody obtained work authorization, that could actually lead them to, to be uh, returned, uh, removed from the country and sent back to their home country. The problem with that is I don't think that any of those penalties have any bite whatsoever anymore, because we know, for example, by DHS's own admission, they released in 2013 alone 36,000 people who were illegally in our country and had been convicted of criminal offenses, in some cases very serious offenses like homicide and rape and aggravated assault and drug trafficking. And of those 36,000 in 2013, guess what we now know? 1,000 of them have already been convicted of new crimes. And so you literally have a situation in which these folks were in the criminal justice system being convicted. Supposedly, we say that would be a penalty that people would be sent back um, to, their, to their home country and yet they are released in society by DHS, and now other people have been victimized already you know, less than two years later. And so I appreciate the fact that there are penalties. I just don't think that those penalties have very much teeth, given the way uh, this uh, system has been administered in the last couple of years.